six months from today, Canadian athletes will believe, be leaving for Tokyo, the 2020 Olympic Games. And uh, today is also the launch of a new season of the official Canadian Olympic Committee Talent Search, which is called RBC Training Ground. You've probably seen the commercials. Our guest, uh, Penny Alexiak, is working with RBC Training Ground. And this is essentially a program that encourages any young athlete wondering if they might be suited to an Olympic sport to come out to an event and potentially get scouted by an NSO. And these are events that are held across the country. The search could segue into a and and I mean you never know you never know where it, it it's going to go. Yeah. I mean one thing that's happened in Canada is we've become a uh, we're not just a winter power anymore we're a, we're a summer sports power and one of the reasons yeah well sitting next to me Penny Alexiak welcome to our uh, before welcome I, to our I, studio and I gotta say last yeah. time we saw you you were uh, having a, a Christmas dinner with a rather august group of athletes yeah. it, it, it looked like uh, how was the food it looked good. The food was delicious. We didn't get to finish it, though. Is that so right? I was pretty sad. It was just for, just for show? Yeah. That's, well, I mean, it was wasn't just, just for show, but we were just talking for so long. What was that? It was It was a fun, like, did you, you probably hadn't run into any of those people before, I'm thinking, right? Had um, you? Well, Bianca and I had hung out a few times before, and I hadn't really run into anyone else before. Like, we saw Serge at games, but that was kind of about it. Yeah. So it was, but it was kind of as it appeared, right? You, you guys actually did just sit there and eat something but yeah. but have a kind of a free flowing conversation for a while pretty much yeah. <laughs> yeah um we are as we mentioned 6 months away from uh from the Canadian athletes leaving for Tokyo uh for the 2020 Olympics of course the Olympics in Rio were really good to you and you frankly were really good to the the Olympics in Rio as well i, I i'm wondering how is this how is the, your preparation your cycle in terms of preparation changed this time compared to the last time and how much how much of a role does the experience of having been there play in in your preparation this time um i'd say that my preparation has become a lot more like mentally focused i think before the last olympics i was literally just having fun going into it and didn't know what to expect and that's kind of the mindset i'm trying to get into now because i think if i'm having fun i'm gonna swim well but um Experience-wise, I feel like with Olympics, experience almost doesn't even matter because it's such a big event and you never know what to expect. You don't know who's going to have some crazy breakout swim or breakout race mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's just so exciting to go to and experience. How did, how did, how did, your life, how did life change after, after, for you after Rio? Um, I wouldn't say my life really changed that much except for the fact that I just have so much support from so many people now with everything I'm doing and I've totally fallen in love with the sport and I've got to experience so many new things in the last four years that I literally would have never experienced in my life probably was it was it tough that like as you you became a you know a public figure in a different kind of way on a different level um you know you probably can't walk around without people recognizing you um probably opportunities presented them some, <laughs> you know like and, and you know you I would think before those games you could be pretty singularly focused on training and, you know, that that, that was it. Um, you know, did it pull you in other, any other directions? Um, I think it – sorry, thank you. Thank right. you. <laughs> no problem. Um, I think it's easy to get pulled in different directions, but my parents were pretty adamant with setting a good schedule and getting a good team around me to make sure that – it was all kind of set in place, and I was doing the right things at the right time. So, I'm really grateful for that. I find it interesting. You said that you it. You said a little earlier that you actually you've kind of grown to love the sport a little more. We, I think we sort of look at the horror story a lot of time of you know young athlete, whatever the sport has a breakout, lots of pressure, it becomes too much. They start it 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 starts to become less fun. I, I'll just ask you, were you concerned about that at all? Like, did you make a conscious effort to say, okay, I'm not going to let this become a burden. I'm going to continue to enjoy it. Or is it something that just kind of happened? Um, I think it was something that just kind of happened after Rio. I think going into Rio, I was so uncertain of where my place was in the sport. And I was kind of just wanting to finish high school, go to university maybe. And then after that, Mm -hmm. You never know. But um, after Rio, it was just so exciting for me to finally have that clarity of, okay, this is what I want to do for 
as long as I can do it. So how does the so when you the four years between games like I, what you know how did you approach that this time? Did you take a break at uh, at all during that like at the beginning after well, after Rio? Well, af- at the end of like our season, it ends in August, and we usually have about two weeks off. So um, I'll usually take a little bit of a break then. But 2018, I didn't go to Panpax, mm-hmm. and I just kind of wanted to reset before the next two years coming up because I knew it was going to be a lot of really hard training. So those were kind of the only little breaks I took, but nothing too major. Um, have you had a chance to talk to other athletes who've had success at a young age and and tried to sort of maybe learn some lessons about how to manage it? I mean, I was thinking you said you talked about you, you met Bianca. Um, she's a little, you know, she's had a lot of success at a young age as well. Um, have you had a chance to kind of pick anybody's brains about that and just what the pitfalls are and, 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 and maybe kind of structure that to your own, sort of your own reality? Um, yeah, I've met a bunch of people. I've met a bunch of Olympians, um, Canadian rower Marnie McBean. Mm-hmm. I've met her and she's definitely taught me a lot and she's been someone I, I'm able to talk to if I want to about anything, and it's super awesome. Um, I've met Michael Phelps. I've been able to talk to him about his experiences, and it's really cool to just have those people who, like, I would have never met Michael Phelps in my life probably Mm -hmm. if I hadn't done what I did in Rio, I guess. But, um, no, it's super awesome to have those people and just learn from them. How uh, How much of your prep going into the Olympics focuses on what you have to do to get ready and how much of it, I, I'm going to use the word advanced scouting, but how much of it is sort of realizing who your opponents may be, what their strengths are. Does any of that happen or does that wait until you get to the Olympics where you start saying, okay, in this race, I'm up against this person, this person, this person, this person. Um, well, you get to race a few people usually throughout the year. It kind of depends on the meets you're going mm-hmm. to. If you're going to a bunch of U S meets, you're going to race U S people, European meets, and so on, but um, I don't know. You kind of have to figure out how you're swimming mm-hmm. more than focus on everyone else. I find when I'm in races and I'm focusing on how other people are swimming, I don't usually swim as well as when I just keep my head down and do what I do best. I guess so. Mm-hmm. How have you, how have you, Penny? How how have you evolved then as an athlete over the over the last three and a half years? Um. Well, I mean, I've definitely grown because. <laughs> I was like 15, 16 at the last Olympics, and now I'm 19. So I've definitely had to kind of figure out how to swim with like a bit of a different body now. And it's it was a little bit difficult at the time, but um, now I've kind of figured it out. I feel a lot stronger in the water and a lot more confident with how I'm training and everything like that. Yeah, that's it. You know, I I hadn't. You know, I was, but that you know that those years had like. (laughs) Yeah, I know. know, Just thinking personal experience with it, our kids right? exactly yeah it's a yeah that would be that and you know it is it would be something to try and figure out exactly this different <laughs> person you know and, and and try and figure out how and how is when you look at the the you know the fields you you you, you know you mostly beat in, in rio versus the field you're going to see in tokyo mm-hmm. is there, have there been some shifts there as well um i mean there's a few minor shifts i feel like rio was kind of the breakout for a lot of really really young athletes so i'm excited to see how they race in tokyo but you also never know who's gonna come up someone could the next you yeah so yeah. I, well not necessarily but <laughs> someone could come up like two months out from tokyo that no one's ever really heard of before which i don't know i feel like everyone's thinking about that a little bit but yeah, yeah you got to focus on yourself i think i've always wondered do when we're talking about these these major meets in these big facilities, you know, my experience from covering Olympic bobsled and luge is that the tracks are really different. Are pools different? Um, I mean, I feel like whoever you ask is probably going to have a different answer. Yeah. For me personally, it's more just like long course versus okay. short course is so different for me, but I'm not too picky about where i'm swimming in the world right. i just know i have to go and get the job done at the end of the day right now i want to ask you about the uh, the international swim league stuff because that's mm-hmm. the so it was the first season i saw i caught a bit of it on tv it's interesting because actually maybe you, you can explain it better for yeah. people but it puts swimming into uh 
a different context. You know, most people watch swimming in in a, in a, in a multi sport games. They watch the Olympics, mm -hmm. maybe the Commonwealth Games, or or something along or Pan Ams. But this put it into a more you know, I say a team oriented uh, context. It was really different. Talk a little bit about that and, and kind of what it, what it was like being part of that first season. Yeah, it's definitely very different than kind of any other meet you've I've been to or anyone's been to, I guess. It's like a two day little mini meet with four teams and it's super fast paced, like one race right after the other after the other. And it's short course instead of long course. Like I said before, it's almost a different sport. Um, it's super fun. It's super cool. And you get to see the best of the best race was, against each other. Was it fun kind of feeling like, like I know you're on a national team. You feel part of a team. And certainly mm -hmm. at the Olympics, you feel part of a team. But, you know, it's it was a, kind of a different kind of team concept for you as well. Like I wonder what that's because, you know, which is what people run into in other sports all the time. right? Mm -hmm. But it's not, you know, a lot of what you guys do is kind of a lone pursuit, you know, getting yeah. up in the morning, going to train. What, what was it like being part of that a, a team for those meets? Um, it was super different, especially just because I didn't really know anyone on my team. And also our team was probably the most diverse team out of all of them. We had people from literally everywhere around the world. We had Russians, we had Ukrainians, we had people from Sweden, we had people from Canada, from America, like everywhere. It was so it took us a few meets to kind of come together as a team and figure it out. But um once we did, it was super fun. Did you get into it? Like, there was it was there kind of that you know? Did you get a kind of a different adrenaline charge out of it than you would? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. There's, I don't know. It's it's totally a different feeling because there's just points, and you're just watching the points shift the whole meet, and it's really stressful. Yeah, no, I like the idea. The crowd seemed to get into it. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. a different kind of vibe to the crowd. Certainly, you know, yeah. it had more of a raw raw atmosphere to it. Sort of like Davis Cup tennis in a way, you know, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, so is that is they're going to do another season, I assume, right? Is that the plan? Like, yeah. a, how would they do it in an Olympic year? Do you know how that would work? Um, well, it's done for this season for now, but after the Olympics, I think they're going to start adding more meets, more teams, um, more athletes, and I don't know. I, I think it's going to change up a little bit and be more fun. So tell us a bit about your schedule leading up to the Olympics. Now, you mentioned you have a meet in Knoxville, Tennessee. Is it is it? Is it an Olympic qualifier? Is it an, an open meet? What, is, what exactly um, is it? No, it's kind of just an open meet for now because we've only been really racing short course this season so okay. far. So it's going to be our first, like, Olympic pool size meet right. of the season and kind of see where you're at going into the Olympics. And then you go to uh, Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. for training? Yeah, we just need a change of scenery, I guess, at when does, some point. When does it really... When does it really ramp up for you? Again, I know this this time it's going to be diff different than the last time, but, you know, when you came in here, I mentioned that it was six months, and you kind of, oh. <laughs> when, do you, when do you think you'll start noticing that, okay, it's 28 days now, 20, 27 days now? Yeah, um, I don't know. Kind of like I said before, I'm trying to have the same mentality I did before Rio. Before Rio, I was literally just having so much fun before and training super, super hard, but... Um, still just having fun with it i guess but mm -hmm. and not really thinking about the olympics as the olympics and more of just a swim meet that i was going to so hopefully i'll kind of have that same mentality well we got you we should ask you more about a little bit about your role with this training group yes. program mm -hmm. because it's about identifying athletes right exactly. it's, it's, it seems really cool to explain that for to people listening yeah um rbc training ground it's super cool and um basically so when i was younger i kind of just fell into swimming and it was my sport for me but I wouldn't say a lot of people have that same luck and um, RBC kind of brought up RBC training ground I think this is their fifth year that they're doing it and um, they have all these tests that you do from power to strength to speed where they test you and then pick the sport that would probably be the best for you and it's super cool because so many people I feel like are looking for that and they're mm -hmm. looking for a sport that they can do, but they don't know if they'd even be good at sports. So it's super cool for them to just go and try it out and see where they stand with that. And it's free. So it's awesome. You don't have to pay anything to figure out what your sport might be. And if you win the overall national final, then RBC will help fund you in your Chosen, sport moving and chosen forward. field and how and so how old are we talking about what, what age? um it's between 14 and 25 so oh. yeah yeah 
just reading some of the information on it, um, you know, one of the athletes that's come that has come through this, uh, Kelsey Mitchell, a varsity mm-hmm. soccer player, uh, who came out three years ago to RBC training ground. She's now a world record holder in track yeah. cycling, and that's. I mean, the beauty of this program is because we're such a wide country, or we're such a, a, a vast country, not every school, not every community center has the same facilities. Exactly. And you may not have had a chance to find a velodrome. Find a velodrome. <laughs> yeah. Find a velodrome in your backyard. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Penny, listen, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, again, we wish you all the best. Stay healthy. And uh, thanks for doing this. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Yeah, good luck in Tokyo.